Hello everyone, and welcome to CK Med. My name is Clark, and I'll be taking you through Cranial Nerve 9, Glossopharyngeal, today. So here we are utilizing uh, the University of Utah Medical School uh, resource, library resource for cranial nerves. Uh, very helpful resource. The, uh, the link to this is below in the video, as well as on our Facebook page. I definitely suggest using this to uh, tackle learning all your cranial nerves and where they pass through. So uh, as far as uh, glossopharyngeal goes, uh, the main function for this is going to be general sensory, special sensory, a little bit of motor, as well as uh, parasympathetics. So again, this is a parasympathetic nerve, so definitely pay attention to that uh, as it is quite uh, a bit higher yield as compared to some of the other uh, nerves, cranial nerves. So as far as cranial nerve number nine, so we talked about uh, in our skull and fossa or foramen uh, video that uh, cranial nerve nine, 10, and 11 actually passed, uh, nine, 10, and 11 actually passed through the jugular foramen. So this is the main place that things can go awry. And so you need to first understand what can go awry as far as cranial nerve number nine and what are all the things that it's carrying so we did discuss basically what they do but uh, general sensory for cranial nerve uh, number nine is going to be picking up information from uh, your uh, auditory canal such as your station tube your tympanic membrane and your middle ear uh, that's going to be general sensory as well as your oropharynx so oropharynx we have our mouth here uh, teeth and tongue and our oropharynx as well as a little general sensory of the posterior third of a tongue. It also carries special sensory fibers for taste and those are specific for the posterior third of the tongue. Uh, so glossopharyngeal does taste the posterior third of the tongue. So if you damage this uh, lingual branch of the glossopharyngeal you're going to lose that general and special sensory from the posterior third of the tongue. Now, if you damage it all the way up here, you're going to lose everything, obviously. Um, so definitely kind of match yourself up with uh, multiple choice options. Maybe make uh, your friends uh, very long vignettes, very tedious, and say, oh, there's damage to cranial nerve 9 in the jugular frame. And what are all the possible options that could be lost? And so start to just make lists of a bunch of different things from all over the place in the in the in the head and uh, see if they can pick out all the things that would be lost and that's a really good way to practice all of your cranial nerves is to do that just make a huge list of possible symptoms and just circle and figure out which ones will be lost if you damage it at different at levels or, or foramens or fossas and stuff like that so uh, but back to cranial nerve number nine so we passed the jugular foramen we talked about their special sensory no general sensory uh, next is going to be our motor. So uh, glossopharyngeal nerve only innervates one muscle. This little tiny guy right here is stylopharyngeus. So this muscle is uh, attaching to the styloid process, that little spiky uh, process uh, right below the mastoid air cells of your temporal bone. And then it attaches to your pharynx. So this helps uh, elevate your pharynx slightly uh, when you're doing phonation or swallowing. That's the only uh, purpose for motor that glossopharyngeal has. But also we have our uh, parasympathetics. So parasympathetics originating in the inferior salivatory nucleus, uh, which is where our preganglionic parasympathetic uh, cell bodies are located in our inferior salivatory. Remember our superior salivatory was for facial. Inferior is for uh, glossopharyngeal. So this travels along with cranial nerve number nine, passes through the jugular foramen, and then branches off on tympanic nerve. The tympanic nerve travels through the tympanic canaliculus. That's not super high yield, but it travels via tympanic nerve. Once it gets to the tympanic plexus, uh, where our general sensory is going to pick up in the middle ear and everything, uh, it branches off as another nerve known as your lesser petrosal. Your lesser petrosal hops over uh, to... Uh, through the lesser petrosal hiatus to hop onto V3, trigeminal V3 branch, which is your mandibular. Once lesser petrosal, 
which is parasympathetic from glossopharyngeal, hops onto this, immediately it exits via foramen ovale. As we described when we were talking about the ovale, O-V-A-L-E, uh, we described what passes through this. So o, o of the ovale uh, just stands for the foramen ovale. The V-A-L-E stands for the remaining four things that pass through this. So V is going to be V3 that passes through foramen ovale. A is going to be accessory meningeal nerve, or artery, I'm sorry, that's going to pass up through into the skull. We have L for lesser petrosal, and E for emissary vein. So really the two important things are V3 and lesser petrosal pass through foramen ovale. Once lesser petrosal parasympathetics pass through here on V3, they hop off of this highway, which is uh, really, if you start looking at all this trigeminal, just think of them as highways. So we took the on-ramp, on lesser petrosal, then we took the off-ramp at Odic, uh, Odic Avenue. So Odic ganglion is where we're heading. Once we synapse here, now it's post-ganglionic. So post-ganglionic cell bodies are located in the Odic ganglion for innervation of the parotid gland, which is the salivary gland here located on the side of your face. Uh, this is one important thing. So if you have damage to any of this that led to damage of these parasympathetics, you're going to have dry mouth. Um, this uh, nerve or this uh, postganglionic parasympathetics hop onto auricular temporal and that's how they get to that parotid gland. So don't, uh, don't forget that. Uh, and lastly, uh, the last part of this is understanding um, how we have uh, sensory fibers for uh, carotid uh, input as far as barometric pressure and uh, chemoreceptive um, processes of the blood. So glossopharyngeal and vagus are important for understanding the your blood pressure. So you have what is known as a carotid body, so body for blood pressure, and that carotid body is important for uh, picking up uh, barometric pressure changes of uh, in your in your body system. So when you stand up very quickly, uh, you might have a decrease in blood pressure, and that's going to be sensed by your carotid body, and that's going to be sensory fibers that are travel up via glossopharyngeal to come back to um, the nucleus or tractus solitarius, and that's going to help innervate uh, sympathetics to contract all your blood vessels. Uh, in order to, or constrict your blood vessels so you can increase that blood pressure back again and get blood back up into your head. So that's really just the basic uh, as far as understanding for that. You'll learn quite a bit more in neuro as well as physiology uh, of how this works. So that is actually all of uh, glossopharyngeal or cranial nerve number nine. So definitely check out our next video on cranial nerve number 10 as far as it innervates in the pharynx. Uh, we're not going to go into it further uh, innervating the abdomen or thorax, but uh, just simply how it, it works as far as the head and neck. So definitely check that out. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope this was helpful.